Uh, this is my indie lab. It's been sitting back here for a while. So, uh, what? It um, it's a pendulum wave machine, and basically what it is is various lengths of pendulums, and they make a cool pattern <laughs> when they move. So I mean, I guess I'll just kind of show that right now. Where do they want? It? Where do you want them to stand, Brennan? Uh, I mean, it looks best if you look at it from the side. Come over here. Uh, if you want to, it, um, I think kind of the neat thing to pay attention to is exactly halfway through. It'll be split into two lines, and they'll all line up again after exactly a minute. So, yeah. Joe, could you hit the yeah. lights, please? Yes. Thank you. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Everyone be quiet! Go ahead. Uh, the purpose and hypothesis, basically I just wanted to figure out what was going on because I'd seen them in videos and stuff. And I also wanted to see if I could find like the same relationships and the frequencies like elsewhere in nature. And so I predicted that I would be able to find those frequencies like in some kind of musical instruments somewhere. I left the spreadsheet open. Oh no, that had jute and stuff on it. Sorry, you can keep going. <laughs> Ronan, this is live. Okay, I understand that. <laughs> Not college or school. I went through a full round. Oh, yeah, that one. Uh, oh, look at that. That is a beautiful graph. <laughs> Please direct your attention to Ronan Dorsey. Yeah, so, um,. This is the graph I made of the distance from like the uh, the middle of its path versus time, and I did it just for the first five pendulums because it took a while to get that. And so, I mean, you can see all through here, it goes out, and then it's really separated through here, and then it's kind of it might be kind of hard to see from out there, but in here you can see where they start lining up into the groups of two, like in the two sets. And then right in the middle is when there's the two lines going in and out of each other. And right here, exactly halfway through, it, it's symmetrical from that point. Like, it goes through the first half and then it does everything else backwards. <laughs> so, um, and then this is the same graph, but stretched out, because it has all of that stuff going on in there. And I'm not really sure what that is. <laughs> I, yeah, I don't know. I think it might be just a function of that the computer can't really display a diagonal line due to the pixels. But yeah, that was neat. I don't know what it is though. <laughs> uh, yeah, here's another graph. This is just um, the shape of the curve back there. So it's the length versus the number of the ball, and then just some information about that. Uh, so this is, I mean, I don't know if this is really important, but I made uh, an audio version of this where I got a bunch of metronomes lined up, and they're all going at the same frequencies as the balls would move oh, at. <laughs>
don't know how to stop it. <laughs> um, yeah, so, I mean, that's kind of interesting, I guess. Uh, so here's my error table where I just kind of analyze the uh, string lengths and the different frequencies and the periods of the balls. And uh, over here, I was particularly happy with this. Uh, this is the total time it took to go through, like, one of the sequences. And I managed to get it so that it's only 1% off of where it's supposed to be. So I was pretty happy about that. Uh, some of the sources of error, um, damping, I mean, they're all different lengths, so they'll damp at different rates, and uh, that'll cause them to slow down differently. But I don't think that had a huge effect. Uh, the pendulums, they're not the exact perfect length. Uh, some of the balls, I didn't drill them, I just took the ones from the old project, and some of them weren't drilled directly through the middle, so if you let it go for a while, they'll get really far off and start knocking into each other and stuff. And uh, also, the Logger Pro video analysis that I used to calculate the period, I feel like created more error than there actually was, because uh, it lines up really well, but according to this, it's like 15% off. Which it definitely wasn't. So, uh, so can I follow that link? Probably. Uh, in case yesterday, this is kind of a better view so of um, the the thing back there. Or not? No, it'll go. There we go. And you guys can watch this at home too. Yeah. That's really loud. Full screen. No sound. Full cool screen. <laughs> so if you watch this, watch at um I don't know. It's kind of hard to see the time down there. But if you watch at 15 seconds, 20 seconds, and 30 seconds. At 15 seconds, it's a quarter of the way through its whole thing. And at that point, it forms four different lines that are moving in and out of each other. At 20 seconds, it's a third of the way through, and it forms three different lines moving in and out of each other. And at 30 seconds, it's halfway through, and it's two lines moving in and out of each other. So that's just something to kind of watch right here. This would be a good way to teach factorization to little kids. <laughs> oh, YouTube, what have you done? It's right there's three. Wow. <laughs> there's two. That is cool. That's three again. Forty seconds, I guess. And there's four. And then it's back to there. Yeah. Good. Thank you, Ronan. <laughs>